I won the lottery, and I'm leaving you, Lila. It's time I found someone who truly believes in me. The words hung in the air like a suffocating fog as Derek stared me down across the living room. My heart pounded, threatening to burst from my chest. This had to be some sick joke. What are you saying? I stammered, glancing at my sister Nora and Derek's friend Alex, who wore equally dumbfounded expressions. Derek's lips curved into a self-satisfied smirk as he produced a lottery ticket from his pocket and waved it in front of my face. Feast your eyes on our golden ticket to freedom, my dear. My legs felt like jelly as the gravity of his announcement hit me. You, you won the lottery? And you're leaving me? That's right, he nodded, his eyes narrowing. I'm finally getting out from under your doubting shadow and living like I deserve with someone who supports my dreams. The cruel insinuation of his words stung like acid. Was this truly the man I married five years ago? The one who once showered me with affection and appreciation? Derek, I, I, I've always supported you, I cried out, desperate for him to see reason. Your inventions, your business ideas, I believed in you every step of the way. He let out a mocking laugh. You expect me to believe that? I saw the skepticism in your eyes whenever I pitched a new concept, the way you'd grit your teeth and nod along, just indulging my silly fantasies. My mouth hung open, a retort dying on my lips as my mind raced for a counter-argument. How could I convince him of something he was so resolutely convinced wasn't true? You're delusional. Nora's shrill voice pierced the tension, her eyes blazing as she stepped forward. Lila has been nothing but a supportive, loving wife to your sorry ass. Stay out of this, Derek snarled at her, whipping his gaze back to me. I'm doing us both a favor and sparing you the agony of waiting for me to succeed. With this lottery jackpot, I can finally surround myself with people who genuinely want to see me soar. As his vicious words swirled around me, stealing the breath from my lungs, the true depth of his betrayal became painstakingly clear. He wasn't just leaving me. He was leaving me for someone else. Someone he claimed appreciated his ambitions in a way I apparently hadn't. I opened my mouth to speak to hurl back the venom he'd spewed at me, but Nora beat me to it. "'You low-life scumbag!' she shouted, lunging forward as if to attack, before Alex swiftly wrapped his arms around her, restraining her flailing limbs. "'Don't you dare stand there and act like you're doing Lila a favor. You're just a selfish snake looking to trade her in for some young, naive thing who worships your ego.' Derek's eyes widened momentarily at her outburst, before narrowing again in derision. "'You'll see,' he muttered darkly. "'You'll all see.' With that parting shot, he spun on his heel and stormed out, slamming the front door behind him with a resounding thud that shook the walls. In the ensuing silence, I sank shakily onto the couch, the lottery ticket still clutched in my trembling hands. The stark numbers seemed to taunt me. A prize beyond my wildest dreams that should have been a joyous blessing, now marred by the harsh reality of the husband who had won it. This was my life now. My marriage in shambles, my heart in pieces. All because Derek had come into an obscene amount of money and allowed it to warp his perception of everything we once had. As tears streamed down my cheeks, I felt Nora's arms encircle me from behind, her quiet sobs mingling with mine. Beside us, Alex stared off into the distance, his expression haunted by the ugly scene he'd just witnessed. This was the hand I'd been dealt, but no amount of wealth was worth sacrificing my dignity, my self-worth. Derek's cruel rejection would not be my undoing. It would be the spark that ignited an unquenchable fire of vengeance within me. He wanted to see someone who truly believed in him? I'd make sure the whole world saw Derek Jefferson for the delusional, egomaniacal traitor he really was. The next few days passed in a blur of anger, heartache, and disbelief. Derek's words continued to echo in my mind, that outrageous claim of me not believing in his dreams. The more I relived that terrible night, the more convinced I became that his insane justification for leaving hid an even uglier truth. There has to be more to this, I told Nora one morning over coffee, my hands trembling as I clutched the ceramic mug. Derek has lost his mind if he truly believes the lies he's telling himself. Nora nodded grimly. That arrogant jackass is hiding something, I know it. She leaned forward, her brow furrowed. Have you tried calling him again? A dozen times, I sighed. He's not answering. Of course not. He's too busy rolling around in his lottery millions with his new delusional worshipper by his side. 
my fists clenched involuntarily at her words. There's no way he's dumb enough to blow all that money catering to the whims of some vapid gold-digging hussy. Except the more I thought about it, the more it made twisted sense. My throat constricted as a horrid suspicion formed. Oh, God. What if that's his plan? What if he's already found a woman just as narcissistic as he is, who will happily live off his winnings while feeding his ego? You think he's got someone lined up already? Nora looked aghast. That's low, even for him. Jaw clenched. I dug out my phone and began scrolling through missed calls, finally hovering over the contact info for Alex, Derek's best friend from college. He always saw through Derek's bullshit. Maybe he had some insight. The line rang twice before Alex answered, his tone guarded. Lila, what's up? I need to know everything, I stated bluntly, taking a fortifying sip of coffee. Everything you know about what's really going on with Derek and his big lottery dreams. There was a heavy pause before Alex sighed heavily. To be honest, I'm not sure I want to get in the middle of this mess. White-hot anger flared within me, burning away my composure. Don't give me that crap, I snapped, my voice rising. Your idiot buddy just destroyed a five-year marriage based on one insane, narcissistic delusion after another. You're damn right you need to get in the middle of it and tell me what you know. Another pause. Then, okay, okay, you're right. I could picture Alex rubbing his temples as he continued in a low voice. A couple weeks ago, Derek was bragging to me about how he scored big with that lottery prize. He exhaled heavily. But he also mentioned some girl he'd been seeing behind your back, an influencer or something, way younger than him. What? I gasped, feeling like I'd been punched in the gut as the reality sank in. He's been cheating on me? Yeah, and from what I could gather... His big plan was to use the lottery money to wine and dine this chick into being his new guaranteed pay pig for life, all while making it seem like she's just this huge supporter of his entrepreneurial spirit or whatever. The mug slipped from my hand, shattering on the floor and splashing hot coffee across the tile. Derek's betrayal sliced through me deeper than any serrated blade ever could. Not only was he leaving me in the cruelest way imaginable— he was happily trading me in for the shallower pleasures of a materialistic status-obsessed bimbo. As if sensing my inner turmoil, Alex continued in a wary tone. I tried warning him that what he was doing was beyond screwed up, but you know how Derek gets when his mind is made up on something crazy. I always thought his arrogance stemmed from some deep-seated insecurity, I said thickly, my throat burning with unshed tears. But this, this is a new low that I never imagined. Through the haze of shock and heartbreak, one thought began to take form. A terrible, irresistible desire to make Derek pay for the anguish he'd put me through. To show him the consequences of his betrayal. Starting with the woman he meant to discard me for. I met Nora's gaze, an unspoken understanding passing between us. Get me everything you can on this so-called influencer, I stated, my voice hard. Every social media account, every fan page— anything to give me ammunition against the little harlot trying to steal my husband. Nora's lips curved into a vindictive smirk. Oh, I'll do better than that, sis. She whipped out her phone, fingers flying across the screen. By the time we're done, this attention-starved bimbo is going to wish she never laid eyes on Derek Jefferson's selfish ass. My own smile mirrored the icy promise of vengeance brewing within me. The delusion was over. Derek and his new prize were about to face the harsh sting of reality, and I would be the one delivering the painful wake-up call. That low-life scumbag! The words erupted from my lips like venom as I slammed my palms on the kitchen table, glaring at the picture of Derek grinning next to his vapid influencer fling. Alex shifted uncomfortably beside me, his expression pained. I know, Lila. Believe me, seeing him throw away your marriage for this bimbo makes me sick, too. Well, we're going to make him regret it. My voice dripped with steely determination as I turned to face my unexpected ally. In the aftermath of Derek's bombshell betrayal, it was Alex who had stepped up as a steady source of support and inside information. While Nora busied herself uncovering every sordid detail about the social media starlet latching onto my ex like a parasite, Alex had filled me in on more of Derek's twisted motivations. Apparently, Derek's lottery delusion ran even deeper than I'd realized. He was convinced this cow-cam model with a rapper bod as Nora crudely dubbed her 
was the only one who could appreciate his entrepreneurial spirit. The perfect accessory to flaunt his wealth and prop up his crumbling ego. We have to hit him where it hurts, take away the two things he cares about most, Alex stated grimly. His money and his inflated sense of self-importance. I nodded, my jaw setting. And thanks to you, I have the evidence to do just that concerning his lottery winnings. A twisted smile played across my lips as I retrieved the faded convenience store photo tucked in my pocket, an image of Alex, Derek, and I smiling and holding up our fateful lottery ticket from years ago, the very ticket Derek was now trying to claim full ownership over. Once the truth comes out about us being partners on this prize, his plans to bankroll a lavish lifestyle for himself and his new arm candy fling are going to hit one hell of a financial roadblock not to mention the PR nightmare it'll cause when the world realizes what an egotistical, manipulative dirtbag he really is. Nora strode into the room, fire blazing in her eyes, as she slapped a thick manila folder on the table. Speaking of which, I've got enough dirt on the so-called influencer to make their heads spin. Sliding the folder toward me, she flipped it open to reveal a myriad of social media posts. Selfies of the heavily made-up, surgically enhanced blonde posing and pouting, her shrill captions overflowing with narcissistic hashtags and vapid catchphrases. Her real name is Belinda Stone, 24 years young and dumb as a brick. Nora's tone dripped with contempt, originally from a wealthy family who cut her off once she got too absorbed chasing internet fame and fortune to care about anything else. My stomach churned with revulsion as I absorbed the evidence of this woman's unabashed vanity, materialism, and willful ignorance. No wonder Derek was enamored. She was essentially a funhouse mirror version of himself. We have to take her down, along with that ego-bloated pig she's parading around with, I declared, steadying my nerves with a deep inhale. Expose every dirty secret, every con, every pathetic ploy for attention they're attempting to pull. Alex let out a low whistle as he scanned the damning information Nora had gathered. Starting to feel sorry for these two, the more I see how sadistic your revenge is going to be. A harsh laugh escaped my lips. Don't feel too sorry, they're the ones reaping what they sowed. Resting a hand on the folder, I met Alex's gaze, my eyes hardening. Once the world sees them for the shallow, manipulative frauds they are, Derek and his little harlot won't have an ounce of admiration or respect left to feed their delusional narcissism. A grim smile crossed Nora's face as she gave a resolute nod. Time to watch the shit hit the fan, sis. I mirrored her expression, feeling the familiar flames of rage mingle with a deep, vindictive satisfaction. Indeed it is. Derek wanted to see someone who truly believed in him? By the time I was through, the whole world would see just how unworthy he was of anyone's belief or devotion. The painful downfall of his sickening delusions would serve as the harshest slap of reality. And I wouldn't stop until his despicable arrogance was shattered into a million irreparable pieces. This better work. The hushed words slipped through clenched teeth as I stared at the screen, watching the final edits to the video Nora had meticulously crafted. My sister flashed me a reassuring smirk. Relax, sis. This is like dangling bloody chum in front of a great white shark. Belinda will take the bait, hook, line, and sinker. I shuddered inwardly, still uneasy about deploying such underhanded tactics. But after learning the full extent of Derek's betrayal and Belinda's part in it, any moral compunctions I had were overshadowed by my thirst for vengeance. They needed to pay. To have their deceit and shallowness shoved back in their smug faces for the whole world to witness. Nodding resolutely, I clicked the upload button, and within seconds, the video began spreading across the internet like a virus. A perfectly curated look at the affluent, glamorous life I was now supposedly leading post-divorce. Strategic shots highlighted a luxurious and tastefully decorated home, designer clothes and accessories draped across every surface, even a sleek new sports car parked in the driveway with a bright red bow planted on the hood. Of course, none of it was real. Just one big, elaborately staged deception made possible through Nora's media connections and an underground production team specializing in fabricating fake realities. That smug tramp won't know what hit her. Nora grinned viciously, scrolling through the slew of comments already pouring in from confused onlookers, speculating about my newfound wealth. 
Holy crap, look at all the thirsty dudes already slobbering over those bikini shots, she let out a mocking laugh. I almost feel bad for how badly we're going to break their desperate little hearts. Any glimmer of guilt I felt was extinguished as I stared at the still images showcasing my toned body draped in attention-grabbing swimwear around a glistening private pool. A far cry from the modest one-pieces I usually favored. Plastering on a saccharine smile and pouty expression took more, took more effort than I cared to admit. But playing into the delusion, putting on a facade, was the only way to make this sting as painfully as it needed to for Belinda and Derek. Because that was their greatest downfall, letting ego and vanity blind them from appreciating what really mattered in life. Integrity. Honor. Mutual understanding and sacrifice in a relationship rather than selfish delusion. Does this go too far? I asked uncertainly, watching the spectacle spread further across various social platforms. I mean, is there a line we're crossing into dangerous territory? Alex's voice made me jump as he emerged from the kitchen, a mug of coffee in hand. Nah, don't overthink it. You're just giving the soulless narcissists a taste of their own medicine. There was an edge of bitterness to his tone that surprised me, but I supposed seeing his oldest friend spiraling into egomaniacal delusion would breed resentment in anyone. Soon as Belinda thinks you've become the richer, spiteful ex out for revenge against Derek through shameless flaunting, she'll come sniffing around to ingratiate herself. Alex shook his head in disgust. Self-preservation is all that talentless leech cares about. Exactly. Nora stabbed a finger at the screen, where several tabloid reports were already emerging about my mysterious new fortune. She'll see this diamond-studded opportunity dangling in front of her shallow eyes and do whatever it takes to latch on. Glancing between my co-conspirators, I felt a swell of gratitude for their unwavering support and willingness to go to such depraved lengths in the name of karma and revenge. I couldn't have executed such an elaborate ruse alone. With a steadying breath, I straightened my shoulders and tightened my resolve. Whatever lines we had to cross in the coming days, it would all be worth it to pry Derek and Belinda out of their self-indulgent fantasies. Once their true, ugly natures were exposed under the harsh global spotlight, not even their ill-gotten lottery winnings could shield them from the crushing downfall that awaited. This charade would either make them face reality or completely unhinge them as their world of delusion came crumbling down. And I would be the merciless instigator ensuring that total cathartic ruination occurred. The shrill ring of my phone shattered the tense silence that had settled over the room. Nora and I exchanged a loaded glance before I snatched it up, my heart pounding. Hello? Lila? Oh my God, is it really you? The sugary sweet voice on the other end made my skin crawl with revulsion. It's Belinda. I had to resist the urge to hurl the phone across the room. Of course, the vapid leech was slithering her way back into my life, her greed overriding any sense of shame or decency. Fighting to keep my tone even, I replied, Yes, it's me, Belinda. I take it you've seen the footage circulating about my new lifestyle? Girl, yes, it's absolutely incredible, she gushed in that gratingly vacuous way of hers. I mean, those houses, those cars, those designer bikinis, you're living the dream. My lip curled involuntarily. If only this delusional bimbo knew the true extent of her mistakes in aligning herself with a man like Derek. But she would soon enough. Well, I'll admit the past few months have been... I paused, as if considering my words carefully, liberating, shedding the dead weight from my life and stepping into my own self-made fortune has been euphoric, really. A heavy silence fell as Belinda absorbed the not-so-subtle dig at my ex-husband and her new money-grubbing beau. But her desperation for hollow status symbols eventually overpowered any reluctance. You know, I always had a feeling you were too good for that loser, she cooed, her phony sweetness morphing into undisguised envy, especially now that he's squandering away those lottery millions on ridiculous pipe dreams that are doomed to fail. I inhaled sharply, equal parts disgusted and infuriated by her blatant attempt to drive a wedge between Derek and myself. As if basking in her ill-gotten gains wasn't enough, she had to try and twist the knife more. Well, you're certainly free to think what you want about Derek's life choices. I replied coolly, catching Nora's gaze and giving an infinitesimal nod. 
She sprang into action immediately, keying up the prepared video files and patching through to the live feed I had routed to every major news network. Although, I continued smoothly, staring dead ahead at the camera light now blinking, I think the world deserves to hear your take on things from your own lying, opportunistic mouth. There was a confused pause before Belinda's sugary tone hardened with suspicion. Lila? What are you talking, Ab? But her words were drowned out by a deafening feedback whine as our call was broadcast on every screen from Times Square to L.A. Her perfectly made-up face, twisted in bewilderment, suddenly plastered across millions of homes. You see, Belinda, I stated, my voice ringing with furious conviction, my newfound wealth is just as much of a facade as your self-proclaimed influence over the sad, desperate fools who hang on your every Instagram post. Leaning forward, I braced my hands on the desk and leveled my gaze directly at the camera's unblinking eye. The truth is, we've all been taken for a ride by two outrageous con artists, consumed by delusion, greed, and their own narcissistic pursuit of fame and fortune, at any cost. My finger stabbed viciously at the image of Derek now appearing beside Belinda, his expression one of abject horror as he realized our private conversation was being broadcast for the world to hear. This low-life scumbag you've so readily attached your vapid ambitions to didn't just cheat on his wife and mother of his children. He tried to claim the entirety of a lottery jackpot. He didn't even win alone. I was shaking with rage, but a vicious sort of glee burned within me at seeing the blood drain from Derek's face as the video feed switched to authenticated footage of him, Alex, and I purchasing the fateful lotto ticket years ago. Every duplicitous act... Every underhanded scheme, every conniving lie that both Derek and Belinda had spun to feed their ego, I unleashed it all in one brutal, damning torrent, letting the truth scorch away their fragile delusions before a captive audience of millions. And as the look of smug indifference melted off Belinda's face to be replaced by abject horror, I felt a twisted sense of gratification at the fractures already splintering through her and Derek's sad, self-indulgent fantasies. This was only the beginning of their downfall. I would make sure of it. I would not rest until their hollow lives were shattered into a million pieces, paying penance for every ounce of pain and disillusionment they'd put me through. Stealing my nerves, I met Derek's terrified gaze burning through the screen and allowed a cold smirk to crease my lips. This is for all those times you accused me of never believing in you, Derek. Well, believe me when I say... This nightmare is only just beginning. The ballroom was packed, every eye locked on the center stage as I ascended the steps and approached the podium. My heels clicked loudly against the polished wood, the only sound in that breathless hush. This was it, the final phase of my months-long vendetta. One last chance to drive the knife into the rotting heart of Derek and Belinda's sham relationship before a crowd of their erstwhile admirers. One corner of my mouth curled into a vindictive smirk. They'd slithered their way onto the guest list for this self-congratulatory gala, under the delusion they could ingratiate themselves, soil their way into high society's good graces. Little did those two vapid fools realize they were the ones being played for fools. The air was thick with palpable tension as I reached the podium. Leaning forward, I let my eyes bore into the squirming figures of Derek and Belinda situated at a front table, their arrogant expressions crumbling beneath my unrelenting glare. Friends, esteemed colleagues, I began, my voice rippling through the cavernous chamber. I'd like to extend my gratitude for your presence here tonight at this annual celebration of entrepreneurial spirit and community innovation. Murmurs of polite applause spread through the crowd before I silenced them with an upraised hand. However, as many of you are no doubt aware, there exists a serpent lurking in our midst. I paused, letting the weight of my next words sink in. A vile deceiver who has brazenly perverted the symbols of success and self-made prosperity we honor here for his own ego-driven delusions of grandeur. Belinda bristled at the obvious slight, shooting an accusatory glare at Derek, who shrank in his chair like a kicked dog. How bitterly ironic that his craving for validation had turned the woman he sought it from against him within moments. "'You all know who I'm referring to,' I stated, my lip curling with disgust. "'Derek Jefferson, 
a narcissistic, emotionally stunted leech who lied, cheated, and manipulated everyone around him in pursuit of the trappings of fortune. It was like a dam bursting at those words, the once polite crowd erupting into shouts of condemnation and outrage. Caught completely off guard by my vicious assault, Derek jerked upright, his eyes swiveling in panic. That's not true, he barked futilely over the din, before pointing a shaking finger at me. She's the one who never believed in me, who tried to tear me down at every turn. The crowd's scorn intensified tenfold at his pitiful deflection, hisses and boos raining down on him until his face purpled. Silence, I roared, raising my voice above the Fuhrer. As the room stilled once more, I leaned towards the podium, lips curling into a sneer. I did believe in you, Derek. I believed you were a good man once, until your arrogance and greed twisted you into this delusional, hate-filled stranger before us now. My steely gaze landed on Belinda next, watching her shrink under my withering contempt. As for your pathetic sidekick, well, need I say more than she's living proof of the depths to which you've allowed your ambition and ego to corrode your morality and self-worth? Slamming my palms on the podium, I straightened fury blazing in my eyes. So go ahead, shroud yourselves in as much counterfeit wealth and materialism as you desire to mask your inescapable insecurities. At your empty, rotted cores, you're nothing more than snake oil salesmen, profiteering off lies and exploiting the ambitions of others for your own soulless gain. From the back of the ballroom, a loud cry cut through the silence. You make me sick, man. I smirked, recognizing Alex's voice as he stepped forward, Derision etched across his face as he locked eyes with the man he once considered a friend. All this time using people and spinning lies to support your sad power trip? And for what? As the crowd swelled around him with murmurs of agreement, Alex jabbed an accusing finger at the stunned pair. You gave up relationships, sacrificed integrity, your entire value system, all for this flagrant ego trip of a sham empire. Well, joke's on you, Jefferson— because the only thing more bankrupt than your finances is your self-respect. Somewhere within the throng of voices condemning them, I heard Belinda's shrill tones pleading with Derek for answers, demanding to know the extent of his latest betrayal. Their toxic, symbiotic relationship of narcissism and self-delusion finally fracturing under its own weight. At the eye of the storm, Derek resembled a scared child, stunned into silence by the harsh, unrelenting reality crashing down upon him the karmic wheel spinning payback for his inflicted unraveling. Meeting my gaze one last time, his eyes held the slightest flicker of raw emotion. Fear, betrayal, simmering hatred, all roiling together. In that moment I reflected not on the monster he'd become, but the man whose love and faith I'd once cherished. I felt nothing. No satisfaction, no anguish, just empty vindication. And as the roaring wave of scorn swallowed him whole, I turned my back and strode away content to let the tides of public opinion and karma's bitter justice sweep Derek under for good this time. The roar of the crowd was deafening as I stepped out into the marbled lobby, flanked by Nora and Alex. But the vengeful cheers and chants felt strangely hollow, like a dull thud reverberating through my bones. I can't believe we finally did it, Nora breathed, her eyes alight with vindictive triumph. That oily snake and his cheap tramp got exactly what was coming to them. I should have felt elated in that moment. Relieved that my months-long quest to expose Derek and Belinda's sham had reached its climactic peak. Instead, I only felt numb. Perhaps it was the sobering reminder that no amount of public shaming or loss of status could undo the damage of Derek's ultimate betrayal. Or maybe, deep down, I mourned having to bury the shredded remnants of the man I once loved. A familiar voice shattered my turbulent thoughts. Well, well if it isn't the mastermind herself. Derek's acidic sneer hit me like a slap as he pushed through the crowd still loitering outside, Belinda trailing miserably behind him. You, you ruined everything. The blonde's voice cracked with equal parts fury and despair as she rounded on me. All that effort, all those lies and manipulations trying to claw my way into high society, undone by your sad, jealous revenge ploy. I regarded her coolly as she fought to maintain her poise, straightening her bedazzled gown with trembling hands. I may have been delusionally chasing vapid social status and wealth, but at least I still have my dignity. 
she spat the words with as much venom as she could muster amidst the tattered ruins of her facade. You're a sad, empty husk masquerading as a self-righteous icon of morality, Derek hissed, his eyes glittering with pure venom. But I see the truth. Lila, you're just as desperate and spiteful as the day I left you behind. His lips twisted into a mocking leer, couldn't handle the fact that I'd finally surpassed your meager expectations for me, risen above the limitations you tried shackling me we. The delusional rant was cut off by a harsh slap, the crack echoing through the lobby. Derek recoiled, clutching his reddened cheek as Alex stepped forward, eyes blazing. That's enough out of you, you arrogant bastard. His voice dripped with disgust. The fact you're still trying to play the martyr here just proves how completely delusional you are. Derek opened his mouth to respond, but Alex barreled onwards. You were my friend once, Derek. We had dreams, ambitions, but you let greed and narcissism consume you until you alienated everyone who gave a damn. Shaking his head slowly, he glanced over at the shuddering wreck of a woman clinging to Derek's arm. Both of you deserve each other's vapid, hollow company, living the rest of your days shrouded in self-denial and meaningless status trappings. Alex's gaze hardened into a glare as it swung back to lock with Derek's, his voice turning to steel. I just hope, when you hit rock bottom after poisoning yourselves on those delusions, that you remember what it cost you to throw away everyone who actually gave a damn. A tense silence fell over the lobby, until I felt Nora's hand on my arm pulling me gently away. Come on, sis, let's leave these sad losers to rot in the mess of their own making. As we turned to head for the exit, Belinda's voice rang out, desperate and pleading. Wait! She lurched forward, clutching Derek's arm in a white-knuckled grip. Just, just tell me one thing, Lila. Her eyes searched mine, wide and haunted. Is it, is it true? Was everything a lie? This whole relationship, Derek's ambitions, our entire future planned out together? For a moment I considered lying to her, letting her delude herself a little longer before the imminent crash back to reality. But one look at the broken shell of a woman before me, and I knew even the slightest white lie would be too cruel. Yes, Belinda, I stated simply, letting the truth sink in like a dagger between her ribs. It was all a lie, just empty delusions built on a foundation of greed and ego. Derek regarded me with a mix of fury and dawning horror, as if the gravity of what he'd sacrificed was just starting to take hold. But I felt no pity, no sorrow only the faintest twinge of lamentful nostalgia for the man whose potential had led me to fall for him once upon a time. Lacing my fingers through Nora's, I guided us past the dissolving wreckage of Derek and Belinda's sham relationship without a second glance. As the revolving doors closed behind us, I steeled myself for the new chapter awaiting me beyond this painful era. Stripping the scales of delusion from my eyes was just the start of a long journey towards rediscovering my self-worth and independence. But at least now, I could begin that path unburdened by the hollow shackles of arrogance and lies that had dragged me down for far too long. Chapter 8. New Beginnings Six months later, I stood in the shadow of the gleaming high-rise that housed my new business headquarters and took a deep, contented breath. The brisk spring air was a welcome tonic, a sensory reminder of the fresh start and rebirth I was finally allowing myself after so many months of being bogged down in darkness and anger. Can you believe this place, sis? Nora looped her arm through mine, her eyes shining with pride as she surveyed our newly established empire, all stemming from that vindictive little revenge scheme that put that douchebag Derek in his place. My lips quirked into a small smile. In the aftermath of my very public dismantling of my ex-husband's rampant delusions, the settlement I received from our divorce proceedings, coupled with my share of the lottery winnings, had afforded me ample opportunity to invest in new ventures. And with Nora's marketing and branding genius as my co-pilot, we rapidly transformed that influx of cash into a burgeoning multimedia corporation dedicated to empowering women who'd suffered at the hands of greedy, self-serving men like Derek. It was strangely fitting, really, allowing the ashes of my former marriage to smolder and ignite the flames of a new, self-made legacy, a firm rebuttal to the notion I had ever tried to stifle Derek's dreams and ambitions. The guy was a delusional, narcissistic train wreck from day one, 
I just happened to be the one miraculously cashing in on the fallout. You know Alex is still reeling over us donating a chunk of our launch capital to his counseling program for disadvantaged youth. Nora shook her head in amazement. Guy was practically in tears when he found out. He deserves it, I stated simply, squeezing her arm. God knows he endured enough turmoil sticking by us through the darkest stretches of that whole sordid mess with Derek and Belinda. A, a twisted smirk crossed my lips as I recalled the high-profile legal battle erupted when Alex contested the lottery winnings. Derek's snarling, bombastic attempts to claim the whole jackpot for himself were swiftly shut down by a mountain of authenticated evidence and a restraining order. Meanwhile, Belinda's desperate gambit to sue me for defamation and emotional damages imploded before it even left the ground after the avalanche of receipts I produced, exposing her as a shameless con artist and grifter, only out for self-gain. By the time the dust settled, she and Derek were both pariah, bankrupted by legal fees and public scrutiny into their grifting ways. The power couple delusion was shattered utterly, and through it all, Alex remained a steady, supportive ally through the darkest days. A true friend who never judged only encouraged me to channel the vindictive anger into something constructive. That thought made my steps lighter as I strode into the towering lobby, drinking in the sights and sounds of my creation coming to life. Just off the polished marble floors, a cluster of women from our marketing team huddled around a television monitor eagerly reviewing edits for our latest female empowerment campaign. Looking amazing, ladies, I called out, eliciting a chorus of cheers and warm greetings. Behind the front desk, my new assistant looked up and waved, crisp and professional on the outside, with the soul of a fearless fighter against injustice. That was the foundation Nora and I were determined to establish, a blazing torch to illuminate every dark path other women might tread on their quest for rebirth and renewal. As I rode the elevator upwards, my mind drifted back to those dark days when Derek's callous betrayal had nearly broken me. If someone had told me then about the self-made phoenix I would emerge as down the line, I might have laughed at the absurdity of it. Yet here I was, at the precipice of an empire built from the ashes of delusion and deceit. An unstoppable force, fueled by a simple credo, never let ego, complacency, or the agendas of others blind you to your own potential and self-worth. The doors slid open to reveal my corner office awaiting, a sprawling sunlit sanctuary of inspiration and possibility. Striding to the floor-to-ceiling windows, I let my gaze roam across the endless cityscape sprawled out below. This life, this invigorating hustle and soaring ambition, it was the polar opposite to the empty, vapid delusions Derek once accused me of stunting. And in that moment, I felt pity for him more than anything an eternity confined to his own narcissistic hell while I flourished in the light. That was the ultimate revenge. As I settled into my plush leather chair, the phone began ringing shrilly, jarring me from my reverie. With a self-assured smile, I scooped up the receiver. Lila Jefferson, I answered crisply. Let's get to work. 